Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got a, a very special video. I wanna show you guys a new bike and a bike that I'm kind of very proud of. A bike to tell you the honest to God truth, I am almost as impressed with as the Brompton. Almost, but very, very close. And that is the Turn Verge. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the Turn Verge and I'm gonna tell you all about this bicycle. One of the things about giving up a regular sized bicycle is you end up having to give up certain types of riding. Um, I was afraid that I was going to have to give up trail riding forever when I first went to folders because I got rid of all my full size bikes as many of you know and I went straight to folders. And um, I was really really worried that I would never get to ride another trail again because it just seemed that every folding bike that I saw was not equipped for the trails. And then that's when I found the Zizzo and I was able to put bigger tires on it and it works great on the rail trails, gravel trails, and even some medium mountain bike trails. So I'm happy. I'm really, really, really happy. But one type of cycling that I have had to give up, which I was not really, really happy about is performance cycling. Because let's just face it, folders are not designed to be performance bicycles. They're designed to be functional. They're designed to be compact. They're designed to be taken on multimodal transportation. They're not made to be aero. They're not made to be quick. But before we go any further, I want to address the elephant in the room because a lot of you are going to point to my past videos and go, Brian, you said the Brompton is fast. Guys, the Brompton will go as fast as you can pedal it, okay? The Brompton is a fast bike if you can pedal it fast, <laughs> okay? But here's the problem. There's a difference between a performance bike and a fast bike, okay? And a fast bike has nothing to do with the bike itself, really. It depends on the rider, how fast the rider can pump and push that bike up to speed. So in theory, you could put a big old gnarly gear on the front of a cheap Walmart bike, and if you got some guy with beefy legs, he can pedal that bike up to 30 mile an hour, theoretically, okay? 
bike. That's pretty fast. But does that mean that bike is a fast bike? Well, no, no bike in reality is a fast bike. That's a little myth. This is one of the biggest and most common misconceptions out there. And I've perpetuated this uh, myth myself, you know, because we tend to think of, oh, that's a fast bike, but it's not the bike that's fast, it's you. The bike simply is a tool to convert your wattage output the watts that you output to forward motion, okay? And how efficient is that process? So if a bike is really, really efficient, you're gonna use less watts to propel it up to speed and to keep it at speed. And that's the difference between a race bike and a regular Walmart bike. I can pedal my Brompton up to the speeds that some of these guys ride at on their race bikes, okay? And keep up with them for a time. And then you're gonna see me like, <sighs> You know, I'm gonna be outputting so much more wattage than they are just to keep up to the same speed that they're riding at. And you'll see them and they don't look like they're straining hardly at all. See, that's the difference. With the Sturmy Archer three-speed gear hub, you lose some power in the transfer. You lose some power in first gear and third gear. Second gear is a pass-through gear, it's a more efficient gear, but it's obviously not the highest gear. It's not the overdrive gear. But the wattage you have to output to keep that bike up to speed is enormous. Now with that little explanation of uh, what the difference between a race bike and a normal bike is, um, we're gonna talk about a performance folder that I have found and special thanks to Chuck at Freedom Folding Bikes because I got this bike from Freedom Folding Bikes. But this is an actual performance folder and I am excited to show it to you. This is called a Turn Verge P10. Now, before I go any further, there's a little caveat, okay? A P10 is a mid-level performance bicycle. But this is not just any ordinary P10. This actually has a lot of the componentry of an X11. An X11 is turned high level performance bicycle. Now, to be clear, everything I've read online, there is no difference between a P10 and an X11 when it comes to the frame. There is some accessory differences. And this bike has a lot of those accessories from the X11. This bike is smooth. This bike shifts like as fast as you can push that trigger, it shifts and it is performance at its finest. It goes around curves really fast. And see, that's a problem with the Brompton also. You could be pedaling really fast and be outputting a lot and you go around a really, really sharp curve and you really have to slow down on the Brompton because you will fly off that bike because that bike cannot handle those curves as well as a bike like this one can. I've been riding it for the last couple of days and I've gotten a pretty good idea what this bike's all about and I like it so far. I really, really like it so far. Let's talk about the modifications and a little bit of the differences between a P10 and an X11, okay? The wheels and the drivetrain are a big one, and this one has the wheels and the drivetrain, or at least a modified version of the drivetrain off the X11, because I even made it better than the X11. This baby has a Vuleta 62 chain ring. That's much bigger than what comes on the X11. So this is a higher geared bike than the X11. I think this is like a 42 tooth to 10 tooth. That's a wide range rear cassette. That means that this bike can climb like a boss and it can also go fast. With that 10 to 60, <laughs> that's a fast freaking gear ratio. Um, it, it basically has a trigger shifter system. You push this to shift, push this to downshift, and it is extremely quick. Now, this bike actually has the SRAM Force derailleur, which is off the X11, because this uh, bike, the P10, does not come with the SRAM Force. You remember what I was talking about on the Zizzo um, Forte, that cheap ass derailleur that was on it? This thing is so stiff. I mean, you can't budge that at all. And when you shift, it's like, just like as precision as it gets when it comes to shifting. It's really, really nice. It doesn't have the SRAM Force crank set. Now the X11 has the SRAM Force crank set, which is carbon fiber. And if you guys know me, I do not like carbon fiber. So I did not want carbon fiber on this bicycle. I do not want a carbon fiber set of cranks. I just don't. So I like the uh, aluminum FSA ones much better. Even if there is a little bit of a weight penalty, I'm fine with that. The wheels are off of an X11. These have uh, Kinetics Pro X wheels, which the uh, P10 normally comes with Kinetics Pro, but not Pro X. So these uh, have the flat blade spokes. 
it's more aero it definitely it doesn't rob some of your watts when you're riding down the road you know how the wheels kind of are a little bit of a drag these are more aero wheels which are a lot nicer and they handle better they've got thinner tires on them which is a really big plus when you're wanting to race or go faster on a bicycle in general thinner tires up to a point generally work better as far as you know being able to create less rolling resistance and um, they are the uh, Schwalbe ones which are a performance tire which grip really well and handle really well so I'm very impressed with the tires these tires are labeled 20 inch but they're more like maybe a 21 or a 22 because they're a 451 and I don't know what that translates out to but they are a little bit bigger than 20 inch in all honesty when I have my 20 inch up beside it I notice that these tires are a little bit bigger but that just means that you get the best of both worlds you get the stability of a bigger wheeled bike and that acceleration of a smaller wheeled bike. This has got the Pro X hubs on them, the Kinetics Pro X hubs, which the bearings are smooth. The same thing with the bearings in the cranks and the bearings in the pedals. They're really, really smooth. Very, very nice. It feels like really smooth when you're pedaling this bike up to speed. It's, it's just such a buttery smooth experience. Now there are some differences between the X11 as far as, uh, you know, design features, as far as, you know, like graphics and stuff that they paint on the frame or whatever. I think that uh, there is an X11 that has this color scheme as well. I'm not sure. Um, the seat is different on the X11. I think uh, there's a handlebar difference and maybe the grips are a little different. This has got biologic grips, which are pretty, uh, they're pretty comfortable. I'm, I'm fairly pleased with it. Both the X11 and the uh, P10 both have hydraulic disc brakes, which are really, really nice. But the uh, X11, it has like a Diori or Diore or whatever they call that hydraulic disc uh, setup. And this one is just a regular old Shimano. Let's just be honest for a second, okay? Uh, disc brakes on a folding bike is just overkill in general. You're not even using a third of the performance of these particular brakes. Putting anything better on that is just a waste of money. These brakes are more than enough performance for this bicycle, more than enough. And I'm not even getting the full benefits of these particular brakes. So if this bike is not using the regular Shimano hydraulic disc brakes to its fullest potential, you know, you're definitely not going to benefit from having anything better on this bike. There's just no way. So I'm more than happy with the disc brakes that are on this bike. But uh, the main thing is the gearing and the wheels. That is the biggest uh, performance upgrade from the uh, P10 to the X11. And this bike has that. So I think that this bike has more than enough performance. This bike weighs pretty similar to what my Zizzo Liberté weighs. It's about 23 pounds all together, I think. Maybe just a hair more than that, I don't know. But it is light, it's light enough for me, and it climbs like a boss. I mean, this thing is just so easy to climb, you know? Um, that heart attack hill when you come right out of Boulder, I think you guys have seen that on my videos. On the Brompton, when I get to the top, my legs are kind of hurting and I'm panting because it takes a lot of energy to propel a Brompton up that hill. But this bike, I got up that hill with no problem whatsoever and I still had plenty of energy left to continue on without feeling that pain in my legs. It just climbs so, so nice. The stability on this bike is really nice. I could take one of my hands off and, and be doing something else and if I hit a bump I don't feel like I'm going to fall off my bike like I do on the Brompton. So yes, this bike is really, really stable and really, really smooth to ride. It comes with a kickstand. I mean, some people might take that off to save a little bit of weight. It has a magnetic closure system. The fold on this obviously isn't as elegant as the Brompton, but it works. It's okay. It'll work. The handlebars have this, uh, what they call Syntac, Syntac, Syntace, I don't know what they call that, but it's a, uh, it's an adjustable handlebar stem that can you know, manipulate the handlebars up for a little more upright riding position. I have it down for a little bit more lower riding position. It'll even go lower than this. So that's really cool. The latch design is pretty typical for turn or any other folding bike of this design. You push a button and you basically pull out on the latch. Same thing, push the button, pull out on the latch. When I get back to the house, I'll show you guys the fold of this bicycle. It is not the smallest folding bike in the world. 
it is pretty light so it's not that bad to carry but it's definitely uh, a bigger bike when it comes to actually hauling it around so you got to watch not bumping into people if you're carrying it on a commuter train or something like that it does have all the mounting points for putting a rear rack on it if you're into that sort of thing um, <laughs> i'm not going to put a rear rack on this this is going to be kind of my performance bike when i want to go out and group rides with guys with carbon fiber bikes at least i'll be able to keep up with those guys now it only has one detachable pedal and basically you take that off um, it did attach to the bottom of the seat this one has a different seat on it because the seat that uh, came on this bike originally um, I don't know what happened to it but uh, we put another seat on this bicycle so I ended up putting this one on for it for the time being I'm gonna find a better seat um, a more performance seat uh, for this bike probably a physique seat because saddles are just one of those things with any bike that you it's a very personal thing you just got to find a saddle that works for you as soon as i do i'm gonna put that on this bike another cool thing that this bike comes with which is a knockoff of the brompton is it does have a place where you can put a luggage block so you can carry front luggage which is really really cool but in all honesty, I'm not going to be using this bike uh, as a commuter or I'm not going to be using this bike to carry a bunch of stuff with. It's going to be a bike that I use when I want to get out there and do some group rides and stuff. So it's kind of useless to me. But for those of you out there that want to buy a bike like this and put a rack on it and have a front baggage you know block or whatever it is a perfect bike for that um, it is built strong um, the wheels um, they tell me are pretty strong they're handmade so I would think that they are pretty strong I mean overall man it is a really cool bike I am very very happy with it and it does feel that need that I have to go fast you know to get out there and go fast and hang with the performance guys and I'm very 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 happy about that so I've definitely filled in all the gaps that folders took away when I got rid of all my regular size bicycles I filled in the performance I filled in the uh, off-road capabilities and then the utility capabilities and everything that comes with actually owning a folding bike I have all of that so I think I've got a pretty well-rounded collection which at some point in the future I'm going to show you all my bikes and why I have the bikes that I have guys I got to get back to the city I only come out here because it's isolated and I can do a bicycle overview without having to get stopped or talked to 5,000 times like I do in the city. When we get back to the house, I'm going to do the fold and I'm going to show you guys the fold on this bicycle and what it looks like. And uh, we'll wrap up the video then. One hour later. Okay, let's fold this bicycle up. First order of business is to take off the pedal. Like I showed you guys earlier, you push these two little yellow tabs in and you can pull out the pedal. After that, the best thing to do is lower the seat by undoing this latch and lowering the seat. The next thing you wanna do is push the lever over and pull out the latch. Now, here's the tricky part. You keep the handlebar forward and then the magnetic closure system will lock into place. After that, you push up on the lever, pull out, and then the handlebar folds down. The thing is, is the handlebars don't lock into place at all. What you have is this little strap underneath it like this, and basically what this strap does is it hooks onto this little tab right here, and that strap will just attach like that. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And of course it holds into place fairly decently. So here's the size comparison between some of the folders. And as you can see, it's not the smallest folding bike in the world, but it's not that much bigger. Okay guys, you're gonna have to forgive the air conditioning noise, I'm really sorry, but it's blisteringly hot in here and I wanna make sure that the air conditioner stays on so that I stay fairly cool. Now we're gonna talk really quickly about my likes and dislikes of this bicycle. There's so many things that I like about the bicycle. I love the fact that it has a really rigid frame. I love the fact that the frame is really responsive. You put power to the pedals, you don't feel like you're riding a bowl full of jello. You have a really stiff, 
frame, which handles really, really well. I love the fact that the bike is so light, and I love the fact that it accelerates really fast. Not just because it has small wheels on it, but because of the fact that the bike is so light that it accelerates really, really quickly. The handling of this bike, the wider handlebars and the tires being 451s, they definitely handle like a full-size road bike, and it is awesome. Like I said earlier, you have that big tire stability with the small tire acceleration so you get the best of both worlds. Everything on this bicycle works like clockwork. The brakes are really responsive. The shifting is really responsive. Everything is. It is nice. It feels like you're riding a high quality race bike. It has that same feel to it. I've had high quality race bikes. This one feels like a high quality race bike. But I also like the fact that you don't have to use it as a race bike. You could actually use it as your daily commuter. You could put a rack on the back, you could put a front luggage carrier on the front, and you could use it as your day-to-day -day commuter. It is strong enough to take the beatings that the roads are gonna give it, so you can use it as your full-time commuter bike if it's the only bike that you wanted to buy. I don't want to dissuade people from buying the bike thinking, oh, well, it's just a performance bike. It's not just a performance bike, it's also a commuter if you wanted to use it for that. Now, some of the dislikes. I don't like the fold as far as the handlebars. I don't like the fact that you have to take a strap and hold the handlebar in place. It does work, don't get me wrong, it works fine, but it's just not as elegant. I'd rather have a handlebar that snaps into place like the Brompton does. I don't like the wheels. <laughs> and I know that's a contradiction because a lot of people are going, Brian, you just said you did like the wheels. They're aero, they definitely accelerate really fast, but they also have the high speed, big wheel stability. But understand guys, you gotta understand that 451s are not so easy to come by. You're not gonna be able to walk into any bike shop and pick up a 451 tire. So I'm gonna personally order a set or two of those tires just to have on hand in case I need them. But you can't really walk into any bicycle shop and get a 451. They're just not that common. So, so it's definitely something to think about if you buy this bicycle. You're going to have to think about where you're going to get the tires from. On that similar note, the brakes. I know I said I like the brakes, okay, and the brakes were really responsive. But they can also be a little too responsive. You have to have both your hands on the handlebars when you press that brake. I made this mistake the other day. I was riding in the park, I had a camera in one hand and my hand on the handlebars, and I went to barely press that brake and it jerked on me and I fell off the bike into the grass. Now, luckily I wasn't hurt, the bike wasn't damaged, but <laughs> God, man, those brakes, when you barely touch them, they stop, they don't play around. So it could, get, it could definitely get dangerous if you're trying to brake one-handed. So pro tip, keep both hands on the handlebars when you brake with that bike because it will stop on a dime. Another thing I don't really like about the bike is the price. It is a pricey little bike. I mean, it is worth the price, don't get me wrong, but it definitely is high up there. I mean, it costs more than my Brompton did, my S6R, so it's definitely a pricey bike, no doubt about it but you get what you pay for. It is a decent quality bicycle and it definitely is worth the money, but if you want one of these, you're definitely gonna have to spend some money, no doubt about it. Wow, okay, we got through the likes and dislikes. My final thoughts on this bicycle is it's definitely worth picking one up, especially if you're into performance cycling, but if you wanna be a commuter, it's good for that as well. It is definitely a must-have bicycle if you're into bigger wheels, greater stability, awesome braking power, the list goes on and on. But anyway guys, it is time for me to go to bed. If you guys have any comments or questions about the Turn Verge, leave it down in the comment and question section and I will be glad to answer any questions you guys have. Slap a like on the video if you like it guys and I will talk with you guys on the next one. Bye bye.